Hi, my name is Terry Brown from the Faculty of Engineering and IT at the University of Technology, Sydney. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the solution to a typical engineering mechanics particle equilibrium problem. So let's first consider the problem. So we can uh, have a look at the diagram over here and we see that we've got a cable here with a spring in it attached to a link here at B and two other cables, cable BC and cable BD. Uh, attached to rigid walls. We're also given some information about the locations of the attachment points. Uh, so the length of the cable and spring here uh, and also where this point C is located, the angle between the cable and the horizontal and this cable here we're just given the location of the attachment point relative to the link B. In both the diagram and in our information in the question, we're given that the stiffness of the spring is 900 newtons per meter, and it has an unstretched length of 320 millimeters. The next part of the uh, question information tells us what we're trying to calculate. So we're trying to determine the forces in each of our cables BD and BC when the spring is held in the position uh, that it's shown in the diagram. So let's start our solution by writing down um, what we have to determine. So determine force in the cable BD. So I've just called that F subscript BD and the force in the cable BC. So I'm just going to call that F subscript BC. The next thing I'll do is to just uh, summarize and write down the informational data that we're given in this question. Uh, so we noted before that uh, the spring had a stiffness of 900 newton meters, so I've written that down. Uh, it had an unstretched length of 320 millimeters. Uh, so after that, we should write down some assumptions. So the question information says that the spring is held in the position shown, so we're going to assume equilibrium. And um, in the absence of any other information, we'll assume that the, uh, the spring has linear stiffness and that the spring stiffness that we're um, given, we'll assume that that uh, applies for the whole length AB. So the next step is to consider our solution method. Um, so here we have equilibrium problem. Um, so what we're going to do first is to draw free body diagram. So we want to calculate forces. So we need to draw a free body diagram of part of the system in which those unknown forces are acting. Um, so then we will determine uh, the force in the spring because that's essentially the, the loading into this system. And then uh, we'll apply our equations of equilibrium. Once we've applied our equations of equilibrium, we'll have equations with our unknown forces uh, in them, so we'll just need to then solve for those unknown forces, and then once we've done that, we'll need to check our answers and calculations. Okay, so let's begin our solution by drawing our free body diagram. So I'll just copy the picture over here for reference, and we start off by drawing uh, the particle um, or the link B, because that's where our forces will be acting. So we'll have our spring here that's been stretched. So remember our original length was 320, it's been stretched to 450. So that's going to apply a force uh, on the link B here, acting to the left. So let's draw in um, that force. So we have that force there. And we'll give it a label, uh, F subscript SP, short for spring. So we can refer to that in our equations. So then in our free body diagram, we have the force from our stretched spring right, that's pulling on the link B that's being resisted by the forces in our two cables. So let's draw in those forces. So forcefully FBC and FBD acting along the directions of the cables. So on our free body diagram here, let's put in some extra information. So we'll copy across uh, the angle 35 degrees for the cable BC 
and for the cable BD uh, we've got an unknown angle here but we've got the location of the attachment points so this is a right angle triangle so we can work out uh, the angle in here from the inverse tan of the opposite over the adjacent. But first let's work out the force in the spring. So we have F spring is equal to the spring stiffness K times our change in length. So it's important to remember that uh, the length in that spring uh, equation, the equation for the force in the spring is the spring stiffness times the change in length. So in this case we have 900 newtons per meter times the change in length. So our original or our current length is 0.45. So note I've changed the units from millimeters to meters to match uh, the units for the spring stiffness. So 0.45 for the current length minus the original length, which was 0.32 meters. Okay, and if we do that calculation, we'll get 117 newtons. Right, so the next bit of information that we need is the angle theta. So using uh, the inverse tan uh, of this triangle up here, so the opposite length here is 450 over the adjacent length seven, uh, 570. Uh, so the inverse tan of that gives an angle of 38.29 degrees. Okay, so now we have our uh, free body diagram with the force of the spring calculated uh, this angle here we can start to write our equations of equilibrium and solve for our unknown forces so let's start with the sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero and uh, now that I've used um, this direction here coordinate direction y I need to indicate what that is on the diagram so let's put those in so we've got x and y as our directions so having defined that, we can now write our equation of equilibrium. So we have force um, BC times sine 35. Okay, so the vertical component of BC, FBC sine 35, minus the vertical component of FBD. So again, FBD sine 38.29, and that's acting in the negative Y direction. So we have a minus sign in our equation here. And that's all equal to zero for equilibrium in the vertical direction. So now we have one equation, but two unknowns, the force FBC and the force FBD. So let's rearrange that equation to make um, FBC the subject of the equation equal to some function of the other force FBD. Uh, so we've just rearranged this equation here to get FBC equals FBD sine 38.29 over sine 35 uh, which gives us 1.08 FBD and we'll call that equation 1. Okay so we have um, two unknowns so we need a second equation which we get from the second um, scalar equation of equilibrium so some of the forces in the x, x direction equals 0 so this time we have the spring force in the negative x direction, so minus F subscript SP plus the horizontal component of our spring of our cable force FBC, so FBC cos 35 plus the horizontal component or the x component of our cable force FBD, so that horizontal component will be FBD cos theta. And I've just noticed here that I've got that written incorrectly in that equation, so I just need to fix that up. Okay, so that's fixed up now. So I've just got that cos 38.29. Okay, so now if we substitute um, from equation 1 into this equation, uh, we can then have uh, a single equation with one unknown that we can then um, solve for. So 1.08 times FBD cos 35. So we have just substitute for FBC into here, plus FBD cos 38.29 and taken the spring force around to the other side, so equals 117. So we now have one equation with 
FBD here and FBD here as our one unknown. So just rearrange that equation to solve for our unknown force FBD. Okay, so if we do that bit of algebra and do our calculations, we'll get FBD equals 70.08 newtons. Okay, if we now substitute that back into equation one, we can solve for the other unknown force FBC. All right, so that gives us a force for FBC of 75.68 newtons. Okay, so we've solved for our two unknown forces in the two cables. So we just write that at the end um, clearly so we can see the, the final answers. And of course we round up to, in general, to three significant figures um, just to represent the, the level of uncertainty in the original data. So we have FBC equals 75.7 newtons and FBD equals 70.1 newtons. All right, we should also check our calculations. Um, the way I'm going to do that in this video is to just redo the problem, uh, but do it using the method of drawing the vector diagram um, and using the vector equation of equilibrium. Okay, so let's have a look at that um, method where we apply uh, the, equ the vector equilibrium equation and then draw the vector diagram which results in a closed triangle of forces right, because the sum of the forces are equal to zero. So let's start by uh, redrawing our free body diagram. Note that if you're using this method, you must still draw the free body diagram and you must still write the equations of equilibrium. Okay, so this in this case we write the vector form of the equation right, because this justifies what we're about to do next. Okay, so firstly, let's just uh, write out that um, vector equation with our three forces, force in the spring, force in cable BC, and force in cable BD. In the vector diagram method of solution, we draw our known force. So we've got the spring force FSP equals 117 newtons. Uh, so we just draw that fairly large, um, indicating the magnitude in the horizontal direction. Okay, so this uh, equation says that if we add our spring force to the force FB, so add that tip to tail, plus the force FBD, we should get back to the start again. So our resultant of those three forces should be zero. Okay, so that enables us then to draw a line here in the direction of the force FBC. And then we draw another line here in the direction of FBD and then we have our two forces FBC right, this length here is the magnitude of FBC plus the force FBD here so the length of this line here is the magnitude of FBD so now we have our closed vector triangle we can now just use um, trigonometry uh, to solve for our unknown lengths of the sides of the triangle. Okay, so we've got a known side, um, two known angles, and because we've got two known angles, we'll have a third known angle. Uh, so we just can use the sine rule then to solve for the unknown lengths of the sides. Okay, so the sine rule says A over sine A equals uh, B over sine B. Okay, where little a is a side and we need the opposite angle. So if we start writing that down, so for FBC, we have this side here. FBC over sine of the opposite angle. So 38.29 equals FP, FSP, or the force in the spring. So the length of this side over the sine of the angle opposite here. And we can get that from 180 degrees minus 38 minus 35, so sine 106.7. And doing the calculations, we get for the force in the spring, but uh, force in the cable BC, 75.7 newtons, the same as we had before. And if we repeat this process for the force in cable BD, so it's FBD over 
sine of the opposite angle, sine 35, equals the force in the spring divided by the sine of the opposite angle as we had previously. So our force in the cable BD equals 70.9 uh, 70 newtons. I just fix up that um, bit of a glitch there, so it's 70.1 newtons. So if we go back to our previous um, results, 75.7 .7 for FBC and 70.1 for FBD, we can see that we've got the same uh, result here. So I hope that was um, helpful for you um, in your learning of engineering mechanics and solving particle equilibrium problems. Thanks. Bye.